But now we have bratty kids, bad parents, and a bunch of denizens of Lupaland to look at. Let's start with Charlie's family. We have four grandparents, George, Georgina, Josephine, and of course, good old Grandpa Joe. In the movie, Grandpa Joe is really the only grandparent that does anything. I don't even think George and Georgina get a line. The book grandparents are all a little bit more active. They talk to each other and Charlie, particularly when the stories are being told. The book also has both parents at home, while the movie only has the mother. I have to say, though, I really like the character of the mother in the movie. Since Dad's not in the picture, Mom's the one who's essentially responsible for taking care of this family. She's a strong character, yet warm, loving, and extremely patient. She tries to soften the blow of Charlie not winning the golden ticket, yet also wants to give him hope for the future. It's clear that she has a great deal of affection for her son, her parents, and her in-laws. Though I was never quite clear on why she was encouraging Grandpa Joe's smoking habit. Speaking of which, let's look at Grandpa Joe. Grandpa Joe in the book is more like an adult. He has a certain amount of childlike joy, of course, especially for a 96-year-old man. No, really, that's how old he's supposed to be. But he's still a fairly reserved and responsible adult. He, along with the other adults in the story, tries to keep Charlie from getting his hopes up when he's opening his Wonka candy bar to see if there's a golden ticket. Where movie grandpa Joe actually encourages Charlie to get his hopes up, saying that he's more likely to find a golden ticket because he wants it more. But I really like how invested Grandpa Joe is in this search. He is just as hopeful as Charlie, if not more so, of finding a golden ticket. And it's not even so much so that they can get out of poverty. He just wants his grandson to feel hope for something, and this is the easiest thing available. Grandpa Joe is the clear voice of hope throughout this entire movie, and he's Charlie's biggest advocate. At the end, when Wonka denies Charlie his prize, Grandpa Joe reacts in much the way that we would want to. He yells back. Plus, like Charlie, Grandpa Joe gets into trouble. It's his idea to try the fizzy lifting drinks. But also like Charlie, we can see that he has a good heart and is a good person, mostly in his undying support of his grandson. But let's look at the kids. Both book and movie had a good set of stereotypical brats. I think I like the book Augustus more because he seems a little bit more like a glutton. I mean, the movie never really captured how much Augustus likes to eat. I mean, they showed him eating dinner, but he was eating dinner. I also like the book Violet more. I think with the gum-chewing doll was kind of going for a vacant bimbo type character, and the book captures that really well. The actor who played Violet in the movie was good, but the character is just a little bit too likable to be one of the bad kids. In fact, that's a problem with both Augustus and Violet in the movie. They just don't seem that bad. Certainly not compared to Veruca and Mike. And as far as the Gobstopper test goes, we don't see any evidence that either one of them was going to bring the Gobstopper to Slugworth. I mean, Augustus never even got one, and Violet turned into a blueberry before she could do too much. But I like Movie Mike TV better, because he seems a lot more like a real little kid while still being a complete brat. And then there's Veruca. I don't know why, but this movie gives Veruca a lot more attention than the other kids. Veruca is the only instance other than Charlie where we actually get to see the process of finding the golden ticket, with the other kids we just get a news report after the fact. Also, Veruca gets her own song, singing about how she wants everything in the world and she wants it now, right before she falls down the garbage chute. I don't know why Veruca gets so much attention, but it kind of makes sense in a way. I mean, if anyone in this story is an attention whore, it's Veruca. But for me, the big deciding point here is the parents. The book really only focused on Veruca's parents, because they were largely responsible for the way that she turned out. The movie really makes the parents seem like people that we've met. Like, I love that Violet's father is a used car salesman. That somehow kind of seems to make sense. Actually, he's considerably more irritating than Violet is, which is often the way it works out. Also, throughout the movie, the parents tend to shout advice to Wonka, illustrating what he says at the end about how a grown-up would want to do everything their own way and not his. These parents, and the way they play the straight men, and women, to Wonka's antics, really does make the movie that much more enjoyable to watch. Well, I don't suppose there's really any point in carrying on, but there's got to be something that the book does better, so let's look at imagery. Imagination is really the whole theme of this story. From the very beginning, we hear all these stories about how fantastically magical Wonka and his factory are. Now, a chocolate factory in real life would probably be pretty disappointingly boring based on those stories. But in this story, the factory actually goes beyond what anybody imagined. Both book and movie really capture the spirit of imagination that is inherent with this story. The movie even has a song about it. 
Designer Harper Goff really created a magical world in this movie, capturing the imagination of Roald Dahl perfectly, particularly in the chocolate room, which really does look like you could actually eat it, with the possible exception of the Chocolate River, and the inventing room, which looks like someone's basement laboratory, an image that suits Wonka somehow. The machinery is all functional, and the fact that nothing is computer-generated really adds to the realism of the whole thing. And it draws a nice contrast between the normality of everyday life and the wildness of Wonka's factory. But the movie does have its problems. It was made in the 70s, and there are parts of the movie where it really shows. Maybe not quite as many as in Freaky Friday, but still, a fair few. Also, there are just some things that don't look quite as real as you'd want them to. The Chocolate River comes to mind. And we get a lot more evidence of Wonka's imagination in the book, mostly through the stories, but also just through the way that things are described. There's a scene from the book that I really like that didn't make it into the movie, and it's about the development of square candies that look round. And I won't give away the details, but suffice to say, I laughed out loud when I read this scene. And it's a scene that would not have worked in the movie, because it's a very text-based joke. So while the sets and images from the movie are brilliant, they are still somewhat limited to the effects of the time. Whereas the images from the book are only limited by Roald Dahl's imagination, which is limitless.